Welcome to Wargaming with Halpy. I'm Halpy, and this is part two of the Canadians versus the Germans. In a previous episode, a pastoral village in Normandy had been uh, set upon by reconnaissance from the Germans and the Canadians after a short and decisive battle the Germans won out and decided to defend the position. The Hitler Jugend took up. Uh, unfortunately, after two days of bombing, a lot of the structures had been destroyed. The Germans had an infantry platoon set up on the left flank. In the center ground, they had a spotter set up in a hotel and also a, a, a small platoon on the right flank. Behind them was a combination of a Pac-40 some 81 millimeter mortars and two 150 millimeter howitzers. We take up the action with the assault from the Canadians in the center section where they're trying to control the uh, burned out barn uh, that is being defended by the German 12th SS Hitler Jugend. A couple of uh, defensive fires caused casualties with the Canadians, but they overwhelmed the uh, German position, uh, pushing them back, taking prisoners or destroying the uh, units that are there. The German unit fails to motivate to continue the assault, backing up, allowing the Canadians to consolidate their position inside the barn. The 2IC for the uh, infantry company has already joined this platoon, and you'll see him in the background uh, setting up to continue the assault. Uh, this special 2IC is a bagpipes unit, has special abilities. Meanwhile, on the far side of the field, the uh, Germans are continuing to hammer away at the Canadian positions. The Canadians have dug themselves in. Uh, it is obvious that continuing the assault uh, through this open ground is not going to work. They've called in artillery fire, and the 25-pounders, uh, an eight-gun battery has started to bombard the German position. But even though the Germans are pinned down uh, with their machine guns units, they continue to uh, dump a lot of harassing fire at the Canadians, causing more casualties and uh, reasserting their position that the Canadians shall go no further. Meanwhile, in the center of the uh, battle, on the top of the bombed out hotel, an observer has spotting the Canadians as they, in this instance, cautiously make their way forward. They're trying to use as much cover as absolutely possible. It's not a, a push or a rush um, that has happened on the uh, Canadian left flank. Um, the Germans, aware of this, are trying to get rounds in. The Pac-40 does not have a shot. It's too far away. Uh, the machine gun set up inside the church has no shot. However, uh, the observers do call in fire from the 150 millimeter howitzer battery and they land some shots in. As well, there's a German machine gun nest uh, that is beginning to uh, cause some casualties for the Canadians. Uh, the 81 millimeter mortars are attempting to finish off the remains of the infantry platoon that tried to charge on the Canadian left flank. Uh, the Canadians are sent to ground but uh, are not inflicted any casualties as such. The Germans decide to use their secret weapon, the uh, Firefly, which they've captured, and send it over to the far side on an ambush roll and begun to pound away at those remaining units. If they can break this, the Canadian left flank is going to fail. Um, and here you can see the firefly from a top view, but reinforcements have arrived just after daylight. Three Sherman tanks crash through the bushes and begin to return fire against that firefly, helping out their infantry. Uh, the first shots go off and miss the firefly completely, but the uh, return fire from the firefly is effective and uh, the first Sherman is destroyed. Meanwhile, the uh, Germans that have backed out of the barn are still trying to contest that position. Uh, the Germans have two units uh, on the far side, and after a devastating amount of fire, um, including the Pac-40, from the back of the wheat field starts to dump a high explosive rounds into the barn. The heavy machine gun in the church comes into play and begins to dump fire, all of it ineffective. As well, there's a sniper at the edge of the church and he shoots at the uh, Canadians that are slightly exposed in the front position there, scoring a hit. The Canadians fail their saving throw and the sniper 
rolls a six for firepower, finishing off one of the units. So things aren't going so well for the Canadians in the center as well, even though they are pushing into that position. As well, there's a sniper on the far side of the field, and he begins to shoot flanking shots at those units as well. So the Canadians in the center seem to be falling into a serious trap set by the Germans. However, uh, ignoring the heavy fire, they continue to assault the remains of the uh, position for the uh, platoon. In the center ground, the cautious infantry unit continues to push. Meanwhile, the firefight continues with the uh, German captured firefly against the two remaining uh, Shermans. It looks like the outcome is not going to go the way it should be. Uh, the Shermans have won out and destroyed the firefly. Good for them. So that means that the Canadians have now strengthened up their uh, left flank. Those Shermans couldn't have come in at a better time. The two remaining universal carriers with the heavy machine guns uh, be come under fire and one of them is destroyed by artillery fire from the Germans. Uh, their artillery seems to be doing quite well. Uh, as well, the infantry in the barn section are pinned. However, pinning the Canadians does not work too well and they continue their push. Uh, a motivation check for the remaining Universal Carrier and he leaves the game. So that's, that's a bad unit to lose right now. The Canadians, though, continue their push. There goes the 2IC uh, leading the charge and... After a lackluster defense by the remaining units, the Canadians' assault comes off. One of the Hitler Jugend teams is taken out. The command team for the Hitler Jugend platoon is destroyed. And one of the units on the uh, far side is taken out. That leaves just one remaining unit uh, left. And after a quick assault, that unit as well is taken over. Uh, the Canadians have won the assault in the center. They consolidate position. You can see the 2IC is in the very front position. And the company commander for the Germans sees what's going on, backs up into a crater and begins to fire upon that unit as well. The, uh, uh, the commander for the pack 40 can see what's going on. Uh, the machine gun fire works quite well for the German company commander and the 2IC has been hit and uh, has a special roll, fails the saving throw and on a secondary saving throw fails that as well and in an odd quirk of fate the German company commander has destroyed the Canadian 2IC. So even though the Canadians have pushed forward, uh, the secondary defensive line is still in position and begins to pound away at that Canadian position in the burned out barn. Meanwhile, as this goes on, the Germans are receiving reinforcements. The horse transports drive away to leave room for a higher command team who's bringing in a radio truck, two mobile anti-aircraft with uh, 20 millimeter guns, as well a large half track dragging an 80 millimeter and a truck filled with extra teams and extra ammunition hopefully will make a difference on the other side of the board the the allied 25 pounder barrage continues to soften up the germans and the reason for this softening up becomes obvious because on the next turn when the germans realize the uh, Barrage has stopped. They hear the sounds and see the sight of two Churchill tanks dragging trailers charging into their position. The Canadians lift themselves up from their dugouts and charge forward as well. These are crocodile flamethrower tanks and the shock and awe that they cause into the Germans is catastrophic. All units that are under the, these templates of flame are destroyed. The German commander for the platoon is also destroyed, uh, allowing the next in line to take over command just in time to receive the assault of the infantry charge of the Canadians. This was well-timed, and the Canadians are in a position to completely roll through the stunned Germans. It is a historical fact that the uh, Allied 
flamethrowers did assist greatly in causing what we see here and that is that the uh, Canadian infantry are given the opportunity to break the stiff resistance and destroy this German platoon. So one by one the uh, German teams are rolled up in this uh, strong assault and uh, the remaining team left decides that uh, retreating is the only option. They pull back to the position of the two eyed to IC for the Germans and that unit is turned into the last remaining team, a command team for the platoon. The Canadians reorganize at the end of the assault and it looks like they're pushing through. Meanwhile in the center ground the uh, infantry platoon that's taken up a position in the barn is continuing to get hit by a barrage from an assortment of units. However, uh, they are holding their position. The cautious Canadian platoon continues to move up using the cover of whatever they can and push back the German observer and take over the high ground of the hotel. While this is happening the Canadian mortar platoon is trying to round up enough ammunition that they can help out with a second artillery barrage however this does not happen. However the uh, 25 pounders can use smoke and they are called in and drop uh, an extensive smoke bombardment that will cover the Canadians in the center ground which are taking so much abuse from uh, a number of sources. The two Sherman tanks on the Canadian left flank are attempting to shoot at a target that is extremely dangerous to them and that is the 88 that the uh, tanks can see setting up uh, on the far field. Uh, the Canadians dump a ton of rounds at this gun uh, but do not destroy it and the 88 begins to fire back. Meanwhile the uh, two 150 millimeter guns and the HMG in the town begin to pound rounds at the Canadians that they can see up on the top of the hotel. The explosive power of the 150 millimeter howitzers and the heavy fire coming in from the German heavy machine gun caused the Canadians on the top of the hotel to go to ground having to use the bulletproof cover to uh, the best of their ability. So far the Canadians, uh, the platoon in this section has not taken any damage. On the left the German 2IC, a machine gun unit and the observer as well as an HMG dig in for the Canadians next assault. In the center ground, the 88 millimeter fires at the Canadian Shermans on the far side. Luckily, one of them is bailed out, but none are destroyed. The pack as well fires at the uh, Shermans, misses with both of his shots. In this duel between two tanks and two anti tank guns, the Germans definitely have an advantage. The Allies do have the ability to fire uh, double the amount of rounds as they normally would, re-rolling misses because of the range. And in an absolutely lucky round of rolling, the Sherman tanks hit the 88 who fails the saving throw, the firepower comes off, and the big guns for the German is destroyed. A totally great bit of luck for the Canadians, who are done. The uh, 25 pounders off board artillery begins a counter battery fire against the uh, 150 millimeter howitzers of the Germans. And unfortunately for the Germans, it's very, very concentrated fire, and one of their guns is eliminated. That insult to injury. So is the commander for that gun. We can see the mobile AA guns of the Germans have been given orders to push at the center ground. They're driving up the road and their 20 millimeter uh, anti-aircraft guns are shooting into the top of the hotel, uh, pinning yet again the uh, Canadians. The Canadians return fire by calling in shots from the 3-inch mortar platoon and uh, those mortars managed to catch in one barrage uh, both of the AA guns and the Pac-40. Uh, fortunately, the uh, Pac-40 is in uh, good cover and they survive. However, one of the uh, 
German vehicles is hit by a direct hit from the mortars and is destroyed. The Hitler Jugend 12th SS Division is rated as fearless veteran and this is shown in such as the AA gun, the 20 millimeter gun continues to fire non-stop into the uh, hotel and the infantry platoon takes its first casualty. On top of this, the heavy machine gun unit continues its heavy fire into the uh, hotel. And after a bunch of dice rolling, uh, the Canadians fail saving throws. And yet again, another casualty was taken from the forward teams of that uh, central platoon. The assaulting unit that was backed up by the crocodile tanks consolidates their position a little more. Uh, not coming out of the forests, waiting for their big friends to lumber up behind them and prepare for the next assault phase. The Pac-40 is now the only anti-tank gun that the Germans have, and it continues to duel with the Shermans at long range, hitting one and causing it to be bailed out, but unfortunately uh, neither of them was destroyed. Return fire from the Shermans was more effective and the last anti-tank gun for the Germans is destroyed. The remaining howitzer for the Germans is still pinned down. The German mortar platoon continues to dump rounds onto the uh, Canadians in the barn in the central position, pinning them down. However, the Canadians, uh, with their special abilities, uh, refuse to stay pinned down and again are in fighting position. As well, the unit that took heavy fire in the hotel is pinned down, but unpins and the units continue their cautious movement and push into the top of the hotel. This ability of the Canadian infantry to take heavy casualties, but to continue to push on their objective is uh, very reflective of how the battles went in uh, the Normandy campaign. In Halpy's house rules, the uh, Churchill crocodiles are allowed to flame twice during a game to represent the uh, huge amount of fuel in the trailers. And as the flames come off, the German 2IC, the machine gun unit, and the observer are destroyed. There is a sniper team on the German right flank, and as far as their higher command team can tell, that is all that's stopping the Sherman tanks and the infantry uh, from, of the Canadians from pushing forward. In the center ground, the company command and the command team of the pack is all that remains to stop the infantry in the center ground. He also knows that the HMG in the church is looking at two Churchill crocodiles and infantry backing them up. It seems an obvious conclusion that that HMG, the 1AA gun, the mortars, the HMG nest, and the howitzer are all that's left. So what should he do? What's the right course of action? Retreat. The game's over. The Canadians have won. So here we can see the... Uh, remains of the German company and reinforcements in column formation as they make their way out of the town, leaving the ruins for the Canadians. If things had gone a little differently, if the Germans had had just a little bit of luck with their anti-tank guns, uh, the outcome of the battle could have been a lot different. But, however, th things didn't go their way, and... We can say goodbye to this uh, 12th SS Hitler Jugend group as they make their way off the field. The Canadians were in pretty good standing. Their mortar platoon took no damage. Uh, the infantry, backed up by the Churchills, uh, survived with little uh, casualties. The center group, which applied pressure very cautiously, is still in good order. Uh, the infantry took heavy casualties in the center, but did take over uh, their objective, which was the barn. Uh, the worst group was the infantry on the left flank, which was destroyed. And of course, the two lucky Shermans that defied all the odds. So this is Wargaming with Halpy. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to giving you the next in this series, which is an armored battle near Khan. Cheers.